gamers this is ngg here with another a review video this time it is for hyrule warriors age of calamity now if you guys don't know this is a prequel of sorts to uh zelda the breath of the wild um we have a guest host with us here we got darth from um our discord channel aka my son um and we played this game together exclusively and so we're gonna talk to you about everything that has to do with the story the gameplay and we will both give you a rating for it this is definitely a multiplayer game and that is how we exclusively play it i rarely touch single player if at all so let's get into the story so the story of hyrule warriors age of calamity like i said before is a prequel story to breath of the wild if you have not played breath of the wild i would have thought played this one first and then Breath of the Wild, but no, you don't want to do that. You want to play it in the order it came out. You want to play Breath of the Wild, then this one, and then Tears of the Kingdom. I haven't played Tears of the Kingdom because I wanted this to be a kind of clean review with no influences of Tears of the Kingdom, minus the first, like, four hours of Tears of the Kingdom that I've played. Um, so in this story, uh, you... Are, now, this will be spoilers for Breath of the Wild. So if you have not played Breath of the Wild, this is... I'm definitely going to be spoiling anything that has to do with Breath of the Wild. Not Tears of the Kingdom because I haven't played it. And when we get into spoilers for this specific game, I'll let you know as well where to skip. But right now, this is definitely going to be spoilers for Breath of the Wild. If you did not play Breath of the Wild, do not watch this or watch it at your own risk. Alright, so the story of Age of Calamity takes place at the, the beginning of, of the Breath of the Wild. So right before... The, uh, the, the calamity happened in Breath of the Wild, um, you are taken back to where Zelda uh, is looking for her, um, they, they find out that the calamity is coming and they're trying to prepare for the calamity uh, of Ganon by preparing their weapons. So they find this ancient technology um, using the guardians that are there and using like the the I forget what the, 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 the writer, the... Divine Beast? Divine Beast, yes. The Divine Beast. And um, they also uh, are trying to get Zelda's power to come come to her. Because right now, Zelda doesn't have her power. Her power is dormant. It won't wake up for some reason for her. And you find out about that a little bit in Breath of the Wild when you're playing the game that she, she had a hard time awakening her power. So this is just a longer story and i to be fair i'm gonna say that this had a much better story than breath of the wild because this one i wasn't as convoluted and i did appreciate where it's supposed to be a war and since this is a fighting muso game guys it is definitely a war that is taking place so um i did like that it it went from like being an action adventure to a warrior style muso game because we are generally we're at war so what zelda is doing with impa is they're going to all of the four corners and trying to find pilots for the divine beast to try to thwart calamity ganon they know that they need to pilot the divine beast in order to stop Ca calamity ganon from even coming um and then something comes up like this little robot thing comes from the future into this world so he comes from the zelda breath of the wild timeline into this thing and he literally this little thing reminds me of r2d2 it sounds like r2d2 it kind of looks like r2d2 in my mind i'm gonna call it R2. i look i don't watch star wars and i'm gonna call it r2d2 because that's what it reminds me of so this thing comes back from the future to the past and it kind of they can see like images of what happened in the breath of the wild timeline so they see that it, uh, that calamity ganon has come that he has ruined the world and they're trying to see if they can figure out a way to thwart calamity ganon um now that they know what's gonna happen they they don't they only get certain images they don't know everything that's gonna happen but they kind of see images of what's happening in that timeline and they they're trying to to thwart Calamity Ganon from coming. So this story is all about Zelda trying to get her powers, trying to get the 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 champions on their divine beast to help 
save the world. So basically, uh, a beginning part of Breath of the Wild, because when we get to Breath of the Wild, we know that that didn't happen. They did. It didn't work. It didn't work. They didn't thwart Ganon. So they're trying. He, the little robot comes back, and they're trying to uh, fix the timeline, I guess, um, and see see that that doesn't happen. Now, um, we'll probably talk more a little bit more about story later on in the spoiler section. But right now, we're gonna get into gameplay, and we're gonna let Darth take over gameplay for us because um, this was a multiplayer Muso game. So we'll let him. Handle gameplay. In terms of gameplay, I thought it was a really cool idea. I mostly played as Link because he's a knight and I'm, if you couldn't tell, kind of obsessed with knights. So when I was playing as Link, I thought it was really cool that they had brought it back from the other game. Like a lot of the moveset combos for Link from Breath of the Wild. You'd be able to parry with the shield. Um, you'd be able to shoot with the bow. A lot of the um, dodge attacks. And some of the um, moveset from the monsters that you'd be facing would, from the games would translate over. So if you had played the, um, the Breath of the Wild game, you'd be able to probably pretty accurately dodge, parry, basically be pretty good at combat against these monsters that you were fighting. Because, one, their movesets were pretty predictable. But it also provided a fun challenge and a fun callback to the other game, whereas, like, your skill level in that game kind of helped you out with this game in itself. It wasn't entirely difficult, but it was still kind of fun to be able to like do extra combos, parries, etc. Another thing with the gameplay is that for the maps themselves, when you'd be fighting, if you knew like the area that you were like in, for example, I when I was playing Breath of the Wild, I kind of explored pretty much everything because I'm a really big fan of exploration in, in open world games. So I found it really fun to be able to go with my knowledge from from Breath of the Wild and look around the regions and know where I was going because I'd explored them in the other game. So I'd be able to like, oh, this is where I'm at. I'm headed to I'm headed to location A, which is ne right next to this location, which you would also sometimes find like special items if you went to certain locations that would, would be in other games. So it'd be really interesting. For the D Divine Beast combat, I found it really interesting and like a very cool like kind of experience because it would basically turn you into like a giant a megazord <laughs> it's for like power rangers basically and each divine beast would have their own set of powers how um the one from the desert would be able to use electric attacks the one from the the elephant would be able to use water attacks um the birds the birds kind of was like out there so it was more like aerial combat um, air locking missiles, um, laser beams, a lot of cool stuff. I mean, there was a lot of laser beams from all of them because they all shoot lasers, but more so with the bird than everything else. And with the one from the lizard from the volcano would be shooting fire, stomping around, breaking stuff. It was very cool to see how they each incorporated each divine beast like design into how it would fight in actual combat and how the enemies that you would fight Basically, you would feel like you were like slaughtering through all of them because you just felt the raw power of the machine that you were piloting. Right. And so for me with gameplay, um, I know I definitely had a hard time with the map because a lot of it was just unlockables in the map where like mini missions, unless you were doing a main mission, a lot of the, min the map had lots and lots of mini missions to level up your particular fighter and um you were also finding a lot of characters from breath of the wild and some that didn't exist in breath of the wild as well in this game so you found has has to has to i don't remember him being a playable character in breath of the wild i don't even know if he was in breath of the wild he might have been he was he was okay um so there has to you can play as you can play as the fairies from the fountains um, so you got to play as characters that you didn't get to experience in Breath of the Wild, people that were there. And so I did like that in terms of gameplay. Every character plays completely different um, with their play styles. I, for myself, stood mainly with Herbosa and sometimes Impa in the beginning when Herbosa wasn't available because just because I liked shooting lightning at the enemies, 
Um, whereas, like, you played with Link and he, you used to do that shield thing. <laughs> you want to talk about that? So, um, another mechanic that they managed to bring over from Breath of the Wild was shield surfing, which I found very enjoyable. Because not only would I be able to rush through the enemies and, like, if I didn't want to fight through hordes, I would just be able to, like, run through them with all my shields and just basically power slide through them. Which was also a great way of mobility, which helped me get around a lot faster than everybody else. Because when you're sliding around everywhere, it kind of makes walking kind of pointless. Right. So he was always faster than me since he always played Link. Um, so he was always just moving faster through the map. Because you definitely have to go from one end of the map to the other. Sometimes backwards to the other end of the map to find different points. You could actually sail with your little parasail in um, little air pockets of, of air so you still get the glider as well you couldn't glide throughout the whole map but you could sail in the game so a lot of that stuff from breath of the wild is definitely definitely here and i did like that it was kind of explained in gameplay uh we have a new villain in this game he's the one who is trying to raise uh calamity gallon and then they had the, the, oh, the Yiga clan. And was that guy? Shuga. Shuga? Uh -huh. Was he in Breath of the Wild? No. So yeah, there was an extra, an extra villain, super cool villain, by the way, um, <laughs> who wasn't in Breath of the Wild. So they definitely introduced different and uh, new characters as well as some returning characters from Breath of the Wild. Well, in terms of character designs, the new characters that they did add, I was a really big fan of. Like, Shugo was my was by far one of my favorite characters that wasn't in the old game. Because he just came off as, like, a very, like, intimidating presence. That, like, you would just, like, you would want to be him if you, if, when you saw him. You would want to be him. You would want to, like, fight as him. You would want to see what he can do. He'd always have something new up his sleeve. Some new ability that you would have to, um, that you'd have to try to combat. And it was just very interesting to see how they would grab the new designs, the characters, and all that. And how they just blended it. But, but by far, Shugo was my favorite. Right. Um, so now, let's get to the part of the game that I didn't like. And this is probably where we're going to be spoilerish. So I will put down below, or um, in, you should see uh, a number mark, where you want to jump to to skip to the rating section because right now what i didn't like about this game is definitely spoilery so if you have not played this game i would skip to whatever marker that i gave you written or it'll be in the description down below where to skip to so um the parts of the game that i didn't like is they changed the timeline they changed the timeline completely so now we're on a separate timeline because people from the breath of the wild game the the members that were helping in Breath of the Wild came back a hundred years to help in this game. And I'm like, wait, no, that's not what happened. I really was just hoping for a straight up sequel, I mean prequel, not a not a an extra timeline to fight. Like I'm done with these splitting timelines. Zelda people, please just put one timeline. You wanna do a prequel, that's fine. You wanna do a sequel, that's fine. But stop splitting the damn timeline. I would love for it to just have one straight timeline where we're like, all right, this is what happened, this is what happened, this is what happened. No, they split that timeline again and added characters from Breath of the Wild into this game. And it was quite, I mean, it was cute. It was nice to see the interaction between the people who knew the other people had passed. But I'm like, it was so unnecessary. The game was already good. And then I feel like that was where my liking for the game took a dip. And I'm like, oh, what did you feel about the extra timeline that they that they gave us in Age of Calamity with adding the extra people from Breath of the Wild? Well, for me, I had the completely opposite view in terms of I really liked the fact that they called back some of the characters from the other timeline because it felt like, hey, it's like our final stand. We're pulling out all the different kind of magic all the stops we're we're finally putting an end to this calamity once and for all no matter what kind of rules we're breaking what kind of immersion we're ruining and i thought it was just really cool because also one of my other favorite characters from the previous game sidon was there 
and he was kicking series, but I didn't play as him too much because I didn't really I didn't really vibe with his moveset very much, but I thought it was very cool that he was there and I got to experience all these other characters that I didn't think that it would be there. And normally in these types of games, they would just have these characters as like just playable characters without any explanation to why they're there. But I thought it was very interesting that they had reasons for these characters to be there and just like be doing the things that they were doing. All right. Well, I guess that's two very different interpretations of that uh, that split timeline. Anyway, so now what we're gonna give you guys, we're gonna give you guys a rating for this game, and we're gonna take all of what we just talked about into account and for our ratings. And we'll let Darth go first. Darth, a one from one to five. What would you give uh, Age of Calamity? For Age of Calamity, I would give it a solid four point eight because. I really like the game, I like the combat, I liked how it made me feel like I was a true god amongst men, a knight cutting down all my enemies, and it was just really interesting how like I could play a power fantasy. I haven't really played too many games like this, and I think I might be interested in playing more games like this because of the feeling that I got from this game. Well, so you're enjoying Musou games now? Um, so for me, I'm gonna give this game a... Um, Sorry guys, I'm just gonna apologize ahead of time. Sorry. I'm gonna give it uh, a, a 3.5 <laughs> Yeah, I mean I like the game I like the fighting mechanics, but I didn't like what I talked about in the spoiler section and that like really really threw me and so because of that like if it wasn't for that extra stuff that they added I would have probably been at a 4.5 because I did have a hard time um, na um, power, I mean, navigating the Divine Beast. So that's just me. I didn't know how to play as a Divine Beast. So that's a, just a me problem. But the other stuff that they added uh, was not fun for me to experience. So yeah, sorry. <laughs> a three. A three. 3.5. It should be four, nothing less. <laughs> Well, you gave it a 4.5, 4.8. You're good. Anyway, so that is our rating. Um, we want to thank Zarth for joining us today. Um, he does have a TikTok account still. Yes, he still has a TikTok account. It's it's uh, it's not safe for work for some of them, but uh, there is a TikTok account if you want to find the stuff that he does. Um. But thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for joining us. Happy gaming. Bye. Bye.